in the studio. Very pleased to say the actor. And Leeds fan Matthew Lewis is in the studio. Matthew, how are you? I'm great, thank you. How are you? Thanks for coming in. Mm. Um, everyone knows you from lots of, all sorts of things you've done on stage and screen. Everyone always introduces you as Neville Longbottom from Harry Potter. Do you do you care that people still introduce you as that, or are you? Um, it's it's kind of a it's a double edged sword, really. Um, you know, since then we finished like five years ago and. Obviously, very keen to move on and do other stuff, but at the same time, I'm sort of well aware that the stage of my career that I'm at, I never would have been able to be doing the things that I'm doing without it. So you can't, you know, you can't begrudge it, you can't ignore it, and you can't want to wish it away at all. I'm very fortunate that I was a part of that. So but you've been, you've been fortunate and as good enough as an actor, because some people have, who did that mm. have sort of not really moved on. But you've done a lot of varied things since that as well, haven't you? Yeah, well, I've tried. Yeah, I've tried to. It's kind of, again, you know what? I've not. Um, I didn't sort of have a discussion with my agent. We didn't sit down and go, right, okay, from now on we have to do things that are completely the opposite from Neville. We're never going to play a wizard again. We're going to do things that are really graphic and violent. It's, it was never that. It was just, they're the roles that just, just came up and I was more drawn to. And um, and as I say, I mean, this year in particular, I've got some some really cool stuff coming up that are just so far detached from Neville. It's uh, it's untrue. That's good, though. And uh, Ripper Street is back. It's fourth yep. season. And for those who have not seen it, which unfortunately includes me, tell us a bit about what it is. Um, well, Ripper Street uh, takes place um, on um, Lehman Street, actually, is the place in East London. And it's set... Uh, the first series was set just post uh, Jack the Ripper. And it's how the community and the police... Um, very disappointed and distressed the fact that they never actually caught Jack the Ripper, how they then go on to try and reform the police at that time and um, and solve various other murders and, and, and grisly goings on around East London. And now we're in season four. I join as a, I'm a new desk sergeant at uh, Lehman Street Police Station. And uh, yeah, it's more of the same, really. I mean, it's... Um, it's about the comings and goings of, uh, of, of, of people around East London in 1897. Uh, Queen Victoria's Jubilee. Did you have to change your look? What did, what did you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the reason I've got this big beard at the minute is because we start filming on season five um, in uh, about a week, and uh, my character has a big, a big mustache and sideburns and a horrific centre parting. Oh, really? So you grow the beard and then you take the beard off? Do yeah, you, just at the last minute. Exactly. So it's I've not very to... brave that. I mean, really, you should just go straight sideburns and moustache. Well, that's um, what I mean. That's what I'm. I'm going to have that for four months. Okay. And I'm basically repellent to women for four months, and so <laughs> I have to. I have the beard for as long as possible, and then when I go into try, work, try forty years. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have the horrible centre parting though, as well, to go with it. It's well, dreadful. I, I, I you dream of having part. a centre parting. <laughs> My whole hair's a sense of party. <laughs> well, hasn't there there's parts of hipster East London, Matthew, where you know a big moustache is sort of it's you know that's the fashion. Well, this isn't is the thing because obviously I'm from Leeds, right? And I moved to I moved to London about uh, just over a year ago, and whenever I go back to Leeds with this ridiculous moustache, everyone goes, "Oh, I moved to London, <laughs> grown a moustache." I say, oh, there goes. Very hipsterish, yeah, exactly. Um, so you and you're a new generation of coppers. So you're sort of kind of the modern. The modern era. The yeah, I mean, my, my character, um, Sergeant Drummond, um, he's uh, basically just joined the Nick in the last sort of uh, few months before the the series starts. And um, as you say, he's kind of this new generation who's very interested in um, modern technology. So we get we get a telephone for the first time in Lehman Street Police Station, and that's kind of, uh, of Drummond's baby, and he teaches mm. everyone how to use it. And everyone's so used to running up and down stairs and getting young workhouse boys to relay messages and Drummond's like, just use the telephone. There are old school people saying that'll never catch but, up. But, exactly but, that, all that when stuff. When they first got the telephone, though, you always think that, who did you ring? Because you were the only <laughs> one who had one. You know, oh, I ring, well, he hasn't got one, so, you know. It was you know, all just internal, like, within the police station. No one ever rings out, because as you say, that's it. No one else has got and one. people couldn't call 999 because they didn't have phones. But there we go. I'm sure we'll solve that. Probably num the number then the was future. probably it was probably just nine then, wasn't it? <laughs> there only were ten phones. <laughs> um, let's talk about Leeds Leeds United. Um, yeah, yeah. But Paul was telling me he read an interview with you. Sorry, Max. That's right. And he said that you preferred now you prefer the rugby league, which is not surprising because the Rhinos are pretty. Sensitive. Yeah, I mean, I've been I've been a rugby league fan since I was a tiny, since I was a boy, and um, I uh, my dad brought me up with it, and um, I uh, was was a Leeds United fan alongside just as well. I used to go home and away with Leeds United when I was younger, um, and it's sort of just in the, in in the recent few years, um, just with with everything that's been going on at, at, at United, it's um, it's been really difficult to be not not. I mean, I when I used to go home and away was when we were in League One, so it wasn't the fact that we got relegated or anything. It was 
it was just the ongoing debacle that was the ownership, you know, with Chilino, etc. It just became, oh, I just, I just get so frustrated discussing it and talking about mm. it. And then um, I have a lot of friends at Lee Trinos um, that uh, are just a natural progression that with all my friends who played for him and were in the coaching roles, I just became more affiliated with that. But I'm still a fan of, of both very much. Uh, Is it a totally different atmosphere going to a rugby league match, going to a football match? Um, I'm not sure how much of a different atmosphere it is. I mean, a lot said about the difference between, um, you know, people always like to, 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 to get on football fans a lot and say, you know, the, the, the aggression that you get in a football stadium and the abuse that you get in a football stadium. And, and there is a lot of that, don't get me wrong, but I don't think it's as as massive a difference as, as, as people like uh, like to claim it is. Um, I think that in, in, in rugby, you know, you, you fans all sit together and everyone gets on and it's all fine. It's like, you know, with the people I got to watch football with, <laughs> I'd be, I wouldn't I wouldn't mind who was sitting next to me, you know. And I know yeah. that I know that there is that there are a lot of people who, you know. And I still think it's a minority. There are people who want to have a go at, you know, because someone's a Man United fan, they don't want to sit next to them. They're going to fight them or whatever. I still think, and I might be just a naive idiot. I still think that's got to be a minority. I really do. Yeah. Um, and um, and it's sad that that minority now has the voice over the rest of us. It was good to see Kevin Sinfield though do so well on sports personalities. Obviously, the the Rhinos fans all got together and voted for him, but but it must have been more than that, you know. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're under no illusions. We're a minority sport. We we get that. Um, and um, but I think everyone who's who watches rugby league um, and is passionate about it realizes what what and what we've got to sell. We have such a product, and and I love it. And and you know, even when it's a bad game. It's still good to watch, and um, and so I think it was f for the sport of rugby league to get that kind of recognition. You know, for Kevin Sinfield, it was amazing. What a hero, a hero, personal hero of mine. But for the sport as well to get that recognition on a on a national scale um, was it meant a lot to a lot of people in in the game. Oh, I do wish once they've got tackled in rugby league, we say just get off the guy rather than that, that sort thing of they, they hold it down. Yeah. Sort of the, one of them's trying to do the caterpillar from like a nineteen eighties. He's trying to pull the referee into, into giving him a penalty. I'm, I'm with you there. Held, yeah. yeah, I'm with you. Uh, Wigan, Wigan are the masters <laughs> of that. I tell you what, for years holding down, they've got it to a T. Perfect. <laughs> oh, well, listen, thanks for coming in, Matthew. Appreciate it greatly. Uh, Ripper Street back for its fourth season. Uh, a brand new series of the crime drama available exclusively on Prime Video from the 15th of January. Uh, new episodes released weekly. Cheers, Matthew. Thank you. Take it easy. Listening to Hawksby and Jacobs on TalkSport.